Hey there, Uniservo here. Bit ago on the Mill Surplus Radio email reflector list thing, there was a picture posted about an unknown Navy radio. And the poster thought it was Navy, but no, it turned out to be an Army radio. An old 1930s pack set called BC-157 or BC-157A. They're similar radios. Anyway, I thought I'd take the initiative and show off a BC-157A. This dates from 1934 or so, made by Continental Electric and is part of the SCR-163A. And this interesting field set is actually made to sling on the side of a horse. You have to realize that back in the 30s, there was still a little bit of World War I mentality happening. Tanks eh, sort of proved their point, but weren't really accepted yet in many armies, including the U.S. Army. So horses were still a little bit in the doctrine. So yes, this would sling on the side of the horse... And uh, this here is the antenna uh, connector here. Not really connector, but this is the bracket. Oh, a little bit of fuzz there. The bracket that held the antenna insulator. And you can see it's at a funny angle. Well, you had to adjust that. So, well, <laughs> so the antenna stuck up straight up and down when you put it on your horse. There's the bottom of the base there. Uh, you know, because, well, let's face it, all horses aren't made the same. So here we go. This is a box. You can see it's yeah, maybe about, I don't know, roughly about two feet wide, foot and a half tall. It's roughly a foot deep. It's made of wood. The box is wood. It is, I think, covered by canvas and then painted olive drab. And you can see that uh, the paints, it's been repainted at least once. Uh, the paint's peeling kind of badly. Not much you can do about it, but you can see that the outer coat is a little darker than the inner coat. Uh, we have a hatch here, which I'll get to in a minute, but let's open it up. There we go. Of course, we have the hatches getting in the way. Oh, he's something, isn't there? Anyway, here we go. BC-157A. Nice tag, Continental Electric. It's got a uh, roughly 1934. You can see 2.3 to 2.7 megacycles. One band. And uh, this is actually is a receiver and transmitter, not a transceiver. So uh, they are... More or less two independent things. Uh, we have a space for batteries, which I'll get to in a minute. We've got a key here, Morse key. You can see it's, well, can't really see it. There we go. It, uh, it is missing the, uh, the button on the top. That should be an easy, easy enough fix. But let's take a look at the controls here. Well, obviously, uh, antenna connector ground connector there. This is for transmitter power. This is kind of an odd 1920s, 1930s power connector. That's the socket. It's weird thing. It doesn't have pins. It's got pads, sort of. It's an odd ball thing. They, by the mid-30s, they were out of, out of style and weren't used anymore. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, well, we've got a uh, Controls for um, the receiver, megacycles, transmitter, megacycles. Uh, let's start with the uh, transmitter. Well, obviously you set your frequency here. It's a very simple transmitter. There's not much to it. It's it's master oscillator and <laughs> final, basically. It's, it's not much going on. I think they're VT25s. So we'll open that up in a minute. Uh, we have, uh, you know, setting the frequency. And... Um, well, tuning up here, and uh, that's about it. Receiver, we've got setting the frequency, and yeah, apparently you could set the uh, different frequencies for the uh, transmitter and receiver. 
it's a regenerative set so you have a regen control right here so once again you dial in your frequency and then you have to ride the regen control so uh it doesn't break out into oscillation um, let's see what else we've got uh, phone jacks here and then we have these knobs here which are for setting the filament voltage now let's face it power back then you were out in the field it was pretty terrible so you really needed to to get the filaments set properly uh, you didn't want to drive them too high you didn't want to drive them too low so with this voltmeter here and this switch you would select what you wanted to measure you just tweak tweak the uh, transmitter filament you have to tweak the uh, receiver filaments pretty simple we have a more or less TR switch here and then we have this which uh, selects the power for the transmitter now what's interesting is this section here is for batteries you can actually run this more or less uh, the receiver only on battery power because obviously if you ran your transmitter on battery power your batteries would not be happy so you could receive you could run this receiver on the batteries and judging from the cutouts there it kind of looks like pretty standard number six cells there probably for the filament and that brings us back to the hatch here open up the hatch and you have access to the receiver controls so yeah if it was a crummy rainy day you could uh, have the hatch up and listen and then when you got the if you had a need to transmit well then you actually had to open up the set here but you actually could do that these uh hasps get in the way a little bit now we can open it up here let's see how far we can get that i'm gonna have to tilt this down i think there we go now what's interesting is they actually painted the chassis od green and i don't know why but yeah pretty typical uh pretty typical early 30s designs here you can see it uses vt24s and yeah i know i don't have the tubes installed i'm picky about my vt24s i actually want them to be 1930s vintage vt24s uh for the receivers here and vt25s here for the uh for the transmitter now what's interesting is these tube clips here for holding down the tubes apparently there must have been a little bit of mix-up in communication in the engineering department because they they specked out engraving the chassis and then they put these clips over here that cover up the engravings now maybe the clips were a uh, a later feature i don't know <laughs> but uh minor engineering snafu here but yeah, pretty typical stuff. We've got some transformers and coils. And, uh, well, that contains the, uh, the uh, variometer for the um, vario coupler for the um, transmitter. Pretty simple stuff. But interesting, the, uh, the green chassis. Why they spec the, uh, the chassis to be green is beyond me. Okay, and now we're going to be a little bit difficult getting back in. Pardon me, folks, while I try and do this. Well, it's apparently not going to. These sets are finicky. That's interesting. I wonder what's what's causing it to, uh, to not want to go down there. There we go. So anyway, yes, BC-157, another early 30s set in my collection. I do love this stuff. Uh, it's hard to find. Um, I get it at HamFest collectors. And rarely at HamFest. It rarely shows up at, at HamFest. But uh, collectors, sometimes on eBay. I forget where I got this one. Uh, from a collector, I believe. And uh, yeah, it's a neat set. It's completely unusable by hams today simply because of the frequency band it runs off, uh, runs on here. 2.3 to 2.7, very, very slim. 
Yeah, you can't can't really do it. You know, yeah, you could modify it to work on a ham band, but no, don't do that. Don't do that. These things are it's not worth it, basically. Don't don't modify these things to uh to to, to shoehorn them into to your requirements. Just appreciate them how they are. A neat set. Um, I do have some other bits and pieces to the SCR 163A, but this is the main unit, the BC 157A. Okay, well, hope you like this. I'll keep bringing uh, 1930s radios out, maybe some 20 sets. I really don't collect World War II sets anymore. I got rid of most of them, but I do like the 20s and 30s sets. So yeah, leave a like if you like, maybe share, subscribe, look at a few past videos in the library. There are some more 30 sets back there. And talk to you later. Bye-bye.